Well, I have to do this video. Uh, we're spirit beings now, literally. And when we die, God takes that spirit, which is not your breath life, which is not soul life, which is not nefesh kai, breath life, nefesh kai. <sighs> that goes back into the air. And this thing, this heart stops and the mind stops and it decays. But your mind is able to be held by God Almighty. His seed goes back to him and your mind doesn't have power to operate. It takes electricity and, you know, whatever, you know, God knows he put it together. So he knows how to transfer it from one entity to another. And when you receive Holy Spirit, that is your Holy Spirit for eternity, you do not get a different one, a second one, and another one, or anything else. That Holy Spirit which you received on the day that you accepted that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, for that very moment, that's what saved you. That very moment you believed. And nothing else. It's called the seed. It, boom. God gives it just as easy as that one moment and you're sealed for eternity. His, the ultimate plan with the creator spiritually. And so what he does is he takes your mind, just like we do have a wonderful example of this, a zip drive. You can take information from one entity, put it on a zip drive and put it into another entity. Entity? No, entity is alive, isn't it? Uh, apparatus. Apparatus? A uh, one apparatus to another apparatus that has the same port for receiving and giving information. And a zip drive is like your mind. God has every dead person's mind on their own zip drive, uh, figuratively speaking. And God holds your power. Because when you get your power back, when you get your Holy Spirit back to your mind, you will be a God because you will not need a body of any kind. That's God. There it is. There's the rhyme. It just happens. Uh, and so at that point, you will know even as you are known by God Almighty. You will have that understanding because you will be powered by his Holy Spirit alone. Not by breath life, not by blood, not by oxygen, not by food, not by gravity, not by water, not by nothing. You won't have a human body. You will not have a human body because the human body is for the earth. And when there is no earth, like we know it now, and when we do not need to have an earth, because we do not breathe, we do not eat, we do not sleep, we are powered by God's Holy Spirit that put the whole universe here. Do you think he can power you for the rest of eternity with his Holy Spirit? How beautiful is that? And you will have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Creator, which is the ultimate goal of humanity. So congratulations once again, you humans that are born again. Did that just rhyme? Anyway, because you have accomplished the human goal of humanity, the mind has a goal that only the wise will find. Anyway, so, uh, and I do not profess to be wise. Let me tell you, I am a puddle on the floor before my God and my Lord Jesus Christ. And I didn't just call him God. I said before my God and my Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the both of them. I'm a puddle on the floor every day. And I would have it no other way. So, and when you get there, 
you'll know. But only until then. But it is available because I am a witness. Mm, I am a witness. And I cannot deny my own witness. Just like Jesus Christ said. He goes, I don't even witness of myself. But God witnesses of me. So therefore I have to take count of that witness. And I have to witness for myself. For my father said, this is my son, beloved son whom I well pleased. And so therein, the glory of God is given from Jesus Christ to us, Colossians 1.27. <sighs> Thanks for whoever gets to hear this, because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is no Trinity. It's God who is Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who gave his gift, the Christ, and Jesus was the first to receive it, and his accomplishments received it in full. He didn't have it in full before he was raised from the dead. He could have blown it, tempted in all things, yet without sin. Tempted means the possibility. God cannot be tempted, neither tempteth he any man. For we are uh, drawn away and temptation by our lusts and enticements. Whatever entices you that is bigger than God, that's what will lead you away. But God does not have anything to do with that. Okay. God cannot be tempted with evil, evil neither tempteth he any man. And when you know chapter and verse... You don't even have to stand because the chapter and verse stands alone with or without you. But the witness that you can be of chapter and verse is a beautiful thing. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 9 and 10 for the power for eternity to start right this moment. For the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.